In El Paso, Texas, 900 people are in a cell meant for 125. In solidarity, please join your fellow Netroots Nation as you feel moved during my speech to join the symbolic cell we have created in the ballroom. I was given a blanket and a mattress, but at 3 a.m. the guards took them. My baby was left sleeping on the floor. Almost every night, the guards wake us at 3 a.m. and take away our sleeping mattresses and blankets. They leave babies, even little babies, of two or three months sleeping on the cold floor. For me, because I am so pregnant, sleeping on the floor is very painful for my back and my hips. I think the guards act this way to punish us. That's a testimonial from a 17-year-old girl being held in one of the concentration camps in Texas. A little more than a year ago, on June 30th, 2019, many of you joined Families Belong Together in the streets of more than 700 cities to protest the Trump administration's cruel family separation policy. Together, we forced President Trump to back down and end the zero tolerance policy. But the truth is, family separation never really ended. The Trump administration has taken advantage of the loopholes to continue separating families and lock them up in cages. Women who are pregnant are being forced to sleep on the concrete floor. Premature babies in cages, wrapped in shirts, caked in dirt, there are flu outbreaks, lice outbreaks, toilets out in the open, children denied soap, showers, and toothbrushes, reports about sexual assault, and agents who laugh at children in cages in a secret Facebook group. Jacqueline, Marie, Felipe, Carlos, Wilmer, Juan, and Dara Lynn, are the names of the seven children who have died in U.S. custody or within hours of being released. Those are just the deaths that we know about. The cruelty is the point. Make no mistake, the Trump administration is committing ethnic cleansing of children and families on our watch. The Trump administration is holding families in concentration camps, and we don't need to debate on what they're called. We need to get them out of the camps. The Trump administration hates immigrants and immigration so much that they have killed children to make an example of them so that they can shut brown and black and AAPI and trans people out of America. Every day, people ask me two questions. How did this happen? And how can I help? How did this happen? These horrors didn't just start happening a month or two ago when the press began paying attention, or even a year ago. They've been happening every single day of the past year and long before that. This is just the tip of the iceberg. We haven't even begun to scratch the surface of this monumental moral crisis we are facing on our southern border. It gets worse. I will never forget standing outside of a detention center in over 100 degree heat watching a bus of children in cages roll by. They put their hands up on the windows as they yelled, as we yelled, no están solos, you are not alone. I will never, ever forget those little hands. They were so small. The truth is, I have never felt more alone in that moment because the reality is we have abandoned those children, not just the ones on that bus or even the ones in the last year, but for decades. The progressive movement has ignored these children, their parents, their fathers, and the work of creating an America that respects people who move. 
I am a fourth generation American. I am Mexican American and I am a proud progressive, but I'm not an immigrant. My mother or father aren't immigrants. Like many of you, I have a legacy of immigration in my family, but I've never had to deal with worrying about my papers. And what I've learned over the last month is what people are really asking is, how did this happen is, how did I not know about this before? How is this possible? And then they ask, how can I help? Well, I still haven't figured out a low-risk, non-problematic, totally inclusive, easy, portable, visually stunning, media-friendly action that the world can all do on one day. But what I do know is that we won't close concentration camps with symbolic actions. It took a war to close the last ones. All we can do is keep trying again and again and again. All we can do is try. And I have seen what good people can do when they try. I have seen us raise millions of dollars for bonds funds to get out of jail. I have seen us find a sponsor family in 48 hours and a church stepped up at zero hour to welcome them into their home and their community. I have seen the courage of Alan Dornan, an 80-year-old man who has walked two miles for dreamers and all immigrants for 560 days and counting in Wethersfield, Connecticut. A few weeks ago, he and his friends, they're 82 and 79, got arrested outside of a federal courthouse. And I have seen moms and grandmas with babies in their laps work the phones to find an apartment for families who've been reunited on a few days' notice. I have seen angels led by Susie Hazlitt, who became a rapid response travel agency out of an office in DC that brought hundreds of flights for families to be reunited with their families. And I have seen attorneys leave their own babies and sit for hours at the border, waiting with children who are waiting to prosecute their claims for asylum. I have seen hundreds of thousands of people plan and turn out for protests because there is no such thing as other people's children. And I have seen survivors of internment camps. Yes, we should have had for that. I have seen survivors of internment camps go to detention centers to witness the horrors that they know far too well. Yesterday, Yasmin Juarez testified in front of the US Congress. She's a mother who's been released from detention, and she recounted the slow and painful death of her daughter, who died after being denied medical care by Border Patrol. I have seen pastors get arrested in the Hall of Congress. I have seen bank executives respond to the pressure from organizing led by Moms Rising and others and divest millions of dollars from GEO Group and Civic Corps, the main operators of the private jails where children are kept. And I have seen elected officials like Representative Castro and Senator Booker and Representative Presley and Representative Jayapal visit the camps and sneak cell phone cameras into facilities and escort asylum seekers across a bridge to ensure CPB can't deny them their rights. And yet, even with all of this, migrants are still dying. The camps are still open. And that's because some of us aren't trying. Amazon and Palantir. When a raid happens this weekend, when families are separated and sent to these camps, it will be powered by technology from these companies. You think Wayfair is bad. If you, your company, or your organization uses Amazon Web Services, it's time to make that trend too. <laughs> to Democratic leadership in Congress and the chairs of the Democratic committees and every single Democrat in the House right now. Tonight, they're going to vote on amendments that will say that our military cannot be used for border enforcement. And many of our so-called Democratic representatives will not vote in favor of making sure that children and their families are not held in military camps. The DCCC, led by Representative Ben Ray Lujan, takes money from the GEO Group and Core Civic, and the lobbyists like Aiken Gump who make it possible for them to continue to keep the camps open because it makes them money. We demand 
that every single dollar from these private detention facilities, from these billionaires, are given back and never taken again. And any Democrat who accepts that money can expect that they will not find themselves representing us anymore. There will be many presidential candidates who will grace this stage this weekend and talk to you about family separation. And to them, I say, you must do more than use your rhetoric or speak Spanish to us during debates. You must go to the border. You must force yourself into these camps. And you must make this a priority, a priority piece of legislation, not empty promises in your first 100 days of office to ensure that we end family separation and close every single detention center once and for all. And you know, I don't think he's watching, but I really wanted to make sure to take a second also to talk to Stephen Miller, the architect of these immigration policies. We know the significant role you are playing in this nefarious attack on our communities. We see you. We're not afraid of you. And you will not win. <clears throat> to all of you in this room, in allies across the country and the world who are watching, I know that you have donated. I know that you have come out on the streets. I know that some of you have brought families into your homes. I know that you have called Congress. And I am sorry, but I have to ask you to do more. These are concentration camps. And children are dying. Every day that these camps are open, we are failing down on the job because these children are counting on us to make sacrifices. These children are counting on us to shut down these detention centers. These children are counting on us to make sure that they're reunited with their families. At Netroots Nation, you can go tomorrow and join the action in front of the Burke's detention facility, a notoriously bad facility that's just down the street from here. People will be meeting at 11.30 a.m. at the convention center's uh, northwest corner on Arch and 12th. And if you can't go tomorrow or you're not here, you can go to closethecamps.us. There is likely a facility in your community. There is likely a camp in your community. And we need to make those camps ungovernable. We need to make sure they have no choice but to shut them down. And finally, to the immigrants and migrants, and especially the children in detention. No están solos. I hope you'll join me in saying, no están solos. No están solos. No están solos. No están solos. Thank you.